Back in 2006, while living and working in Ecuador, I took a trip to the Galapagos Islands, where I met a beautiful tortoise. In fact, the last one of his kind. His name was Lonesome George. I met Lonesome George when I was 40 years old, and he was a catalyst event in my life, an event that inspired me to create an educational program called Academy of Agents of Change. And so the story goes. There I was, standing by George's Corral at the Charles Darwin Station, and I couldn't help noticing and overhearing what other people were saying. Oh, poor thing. Oh, what a pity. Let's find a way to reproduce him. Let's find a mate for him. Let's, let's clone him. It's, it's incredible how quickly we identify the symptoms when we're faced with a problem in our everyday lives. And we, we owe this to our linear reactive minds. You see, our minds are conditioned to think from A to B, from B to C, from C to D. We rarely establish the cause-effect connection of looking back at A before moving from B to C. And here I was in front of a real example of this human-ingrained behavior. And I couldn't help to wonder, what if? What if our minds could be rewired in order to skip the symptoms and go straight into the root cause of a problem and actually come back with long-term systemic solutions? What if we could break linear thinking and actually adopt circular thinking? You see, the causes for George to be lonesome were piracy, early colonization, and introduction of new species all products of the choices we humans make on a day-to-day -day basis, and our inability to anticipate the consequences of these choices. Sadly, on June 24, 2012, I witnessed extinction. Lonesome George, the last surviving Pinta turtles, died. After 50 years under captivity, we were not able to reproduce him, nor were we able to clone him. With his passing, one more species in this planet ceased to exist. It, it's clear to me, or at least it seems that Lonesome George is a clear illustration of the clear illustration of post-industrial linear behavior that somehow is ingrained in us. And somehow we just prevents us from choosing wisely. You see, the saddest part of the story here is that during that same time, early colonization, piracy, and introduction of new species have increased dramatically in the Galapagos. So, so Lonesome George illustrates that, that post-industrial linear behavior that somehow has worked so well for us in the last 200 years to build this incredible civilization that we have. But let me bring this closer to us. Let me bring this closer to Florida. Think about the, the environmental impact that the 1949 Central and South Florida project had on the Everglades as it, as it diverted water and dried 50% of the Everglades to foster agriculture and to create this vibrant South Florida community that we have. Have you thought about that? Let me, let me bring another global example of this, you know, and, and do you know that our everyday choices are making the Marshall Islands disappear? Yes, an independent country, the Marshall Islands, on the brink of extinction due to sea level rising. And this is another example of how our choices, our everyday choices, somehow does not only affect species, but they, only affect, they also affect languages, cultures, Heritages, they end up affecting us. On a more current note, just think about the choices that today, our choices today, how they antagonize, marginalize, and ultimately radicalize jihadist Muslims in our country and around the world. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way, and, and I know what you're thinking, and I know 
that you say, Eduardo, no one plans the extinction of a species. No one plans the flooding of a whole country. And you're right, and you're right. But, but I can't help to think that we can't just say that these are just mere externalities. The outcome of our choices are not mere externalities, and, and they're not just unintended consequences of this post-industrial linear behavior. There's got to be a better way. In this day and age of constant change and of vast information at our hands, we've got to find a way to anticipate consequences better and to choose wisely. You see, choosing wisely is the uber 21st century skill to have. And I hope that by the end of my talk, you're with me on this. Let me give you some ammunition so that you can start thinking in these terms. Let's talk about change. Do you know what the shape of change is? This is the ch shape of change, the S-curve. Are you familiar with this? It's constant, increasing, and diminishing returns to scale. That is what change looks like. And it's important to understand because it provides perspective of change in time from one single event, such as a job change, for example, to a collection of events that create a trend, uh, such as a bullish real estate market, to a long-term trend that could even be, for example, fuel consumption that frames a whole industry, a whole, sorry, industrial age, an era. That is what change looks like. And it's important to take a look at this because what it does is shows us the type of change, which is usually incremental or transformational. And today, we are in a transformational change moment. We are in the gap of transformation. We're in between two eras, which is a very difficult place to be. Because what happens here is that technologies stop working. Concepts are redefined. New words are coined because we need to jump from one era to the other. It's transformational, it's not incremental anymore. Knowing this, knowing this, I created a program that provides the skills necessary to navigate the, the gap of transformational change and to really envision uh, futures and choose wisely. That is what Academy of Agents of Change is. But let's go and talk about what is an agent of change. An agent of change is someone that is awake, and it's someone that has the courage and compassion to mind his choices, shift his thinking, and impact his world. In fact, we are all agents of change. We just don't know it, because we're used at, at extrapolating the present, creating or thinking that that extrapolation is the future. And let me give you the next ammunition so that you start thinking in these terms. There is not one future out there. There are alternative futures. Alternative futures waiting for us to choose and act on it. You see, the extrapolation of the present we call the baseline. And the baseline, it has a probability of 25% of happening. So, for it to happen, just think about it. Everything needs to remain constant. And usually, and unfortunately, the future unfolds from the remaining 75%. That future that we, not, we didn't prepare for. The future that we didn't, we didn't have the, the compassion to experience. The future that we didn't have the courage to face. The future that we didn't... didn't dare to dream about. You see, in the end, we end up in someone else's future. Today, there's someone that has a big dream on the other side of the world. And he's dreaming about a new caliphate. And he's acting on it. That is his preferred future. What is yours? What is mine? I am certain that the world is not ruined by the wickedness of the wicked, as Napoleon once said. The world 
to be ruined because of the weakness of the good. And that is why I created Academy of Agents of Change, to bring together a program that has or provides the skills necessary to break from inaction, break from entitlement, a program that elicits a humanistic process to break from linear thinking and adopt circular thinking, to envision alternative futures and choose wisely a preferred future. Now, I wish that I can say at this point, here is the app, plug it in tonight and tomorrow you'll be choosing wisely, but I'm not there yet. It's a process. It's a process and it requires time. Academy of Agents of Change is a program that is framed within the MindShift Impact Framework and has six interconnected modules. It is imparted in an academic setting to high, high school students throughout a high school year. We use, apart from a traditional classroom setting, we use a five day wilderness course, a compelling outdoor course, to take individuals out of their comfort zone, to take individuals out of their everyday lives and bring them to instinct mode, to survival mode. Because this allows an individual to self-reflect, to become aware, to become introspective. And in doing so, we are rewiring our brains. The program starts with mind, minding your choices, and we do it, we start by finding myself. It's very important to understand what are you made out of. And we put our agents of change from the beginning through very hard physical challenges. And as they become or overcome thresholds, these innate traits that we all have start surfacing. I can't help remembering or being transported when I meet the agents of change for the first time as they are ready to embark on their uh, journey. Myself standing with my toothbrush, looking at my tent that had everything I owned at that time in it, disappeared in a flash flood in Tanzania. I had to make it with my toothbrush, 3,000 miles to Cape Town. It is incredible, uh, when I reflect back on that, on that, on that experience, how, how being in survival mode really wakes you up and brings up leadership, resourcefulness, respect to others, respect to nature, respect to yourself, which is knowing your limitations, teamwork, and above all, compassion. We all have those, and that's what we do in Finding Myself for the Agents of Change. We move on, and once you know that you have all of that in you, and you don't need anything from outside, because that is a trick, knowing that everything to change is in you, you need to find your voice, because you need to communicate this in a, a pre precise and an articulate way. Here is a module about communication. It's about Understanding that communication, it's not just voice or words. Communication is intonation. Communication is articulation. Uh, communication is active listening. Very important. It's important in this module that the student understands that this is about finding your voice. Not your mother's, not your father's, not your coach. Your voice. We move on once we know that. It's time to shift gears. It's time to move on and break mental models. We do it by exposing the agent to a concept which is, I am my community. This is not about you. This is about your community. This is about understanding the role that each of us play within a community. This is about systems thinking. This is about understanding interconnectivity. The agents of change here in Miami, they get immersed in Miami, in that Miami that they didn't know it exists because we're too worried about thinking about 
hunger in Africa or refugees in Europe. You see, it's incredible how willing we are to help someone 5,000 miles away without even knowing what's happening in our own backyard. And it is essential to reconnect to your own reality and your community before you help. So I Am My Community is all about that. We move on, and this is the vehicle of change. This is finding my passion. Finding my passion, no matter what that is, math, soccer, music, will help you get there. This is what's going to really drive change. And we're going to help you connect that passion to, creative, to creating social change. I used to believe this module is, is all about listening to nature for inspiration. And I'll tell you why. I used to believe that, that inspiration belonged to me. And, and inspiration does not belong to us. Inspiration belongs to nature. And I felt this when I was right there with Lonesome George, face to face. I could hear him here. He was telling me, don't pity me. I'm here because of your choices. Why don't you use my story and tell people, teach people how to use wisely? That's the best way to reproduce me. That is when I connected my passion for experiential learning and my passion for social entrepreneurship, brought them together, brought it to my head, and developed Academy of Agents of Change. We move on. This is a very personal process at this point, and it's an incredible human being coming, coming up at this point. But in order to become an agent of change, you need to take everything that you've learned and all those abilities that you have and that voice that you have and knowing that you can create change in your community and knowing the vehicle that you're going to use to do it to impact. An agent of change needs to impact. And we do it by dreaming, do it. Dream it, do it. This is a concept borrowed from Ashoka Youth Venture, and it is a, a moment of synthesis where we bring everything that we've learned into creating a sustainable, systemic, and replicable social initiative. We make sure that we understand the financial side of it, the business, the marketing, to make a sustainable initiative. We need to understand from the uh, systemic point of view that it's a profound change, that we're going to create a profound change in that community. And it needs to be easy enough or conceptually easy enough to be able to scale and replicate. I am very proud to say that I have agents of change that have come up with incredible um, um, initiatives using their passion for lacrosse to uh, get students to stay in school, their passion for agriculture to create eco-tourism project, their passion for reading to create mobile public libraries, their passion for dogs to raise awareness on introduction of new species. And the list goes on. Finally, they present. They stand up, they present, and they pitch to be able to implement, to get the seed capital to implement. We uh, curate a panel of local professionals to come, listen to them, and give them the, the check on funding. In the end, this is not about the initiative. In the end, this is about a process that creates mental shift. This is about understanding that you are the catalyst of turning possibility into reality. This is about getting the tools to navigate the gap of transformational change with a new mindset into the 21st century. This is about choosing wisely. And here's my last ammunition to you. Choosing wisely requires character. And character is not, you cannot wake up tomorrow and have it. You need to build character. It's forged. And character is, it, it comes from two human traits, which are at the core of everything we do in Academy of Agents of Change. The first one is courage, 
which comes from the Latin root core, which is heart, and it is the ability to focus with all your heart on the task at hand in order to overcome fear and act. That's what courage is about. And second, compassion. Compassion is having the ability to step out of your shoes and wear someone else's shoes before taking a decision. Character and compassion, two human traits, is what creates character, and character is what's needed to choose wisely. No matter who you are, no matter where you live or where you come from, there is a pressing issue in your community. Find out what your lonesome George is. After all, we're all agents of change. Choose wisely and act on it. Thank you.